Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be taking a look at a mini PC. This right here is the Ace Magician AD03 and it has an Intel N95 processor inside. Now, what is the N95 processor, I hear you ask? Well, it's a four-core, four-threaded CPU from the Alder Lake N architecture, so it's 12th gen Intel. It consumes only 50 watts of power so it's a very low power chip and it boosts up to 3.4 gigahertz it also has intel uhd graphics inside with 16 execution units so uh, from those specs you know that it, it's not really meant for gaming right but i think this one is the worst one it supports up to 16 gigabytes of ram ddr4 or ddr5 but only in single channel mode like, if you don't know, there is a huge difference between single channel and dual channel, especially in gaming workloads. Of course, this isn't a machine made for gaming, so it's fine with single channel for the basic Windows tasks. But uh, yeah, it will hurt its performance a lot in gaming. Let's talk a bit about the mini PC itself now. Inside of this Ace Magician, we find 8 gigabytes of DDR4 instead of DDR5. I'm a little bit bummed out by that, but okay. And it's 2666. 6 megahertz RAM. Yeah, that's really slow. Again, for the basic Windows tasks, it's fine, but I actually replaced it with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz because, you know, I went to game on it and it kind of sucked with 2666. It even sucked with 3200, but moving on. <laughs> it also comes with a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD with the option to upgrade it to a 2 terabyte drive, and it even has the option to add a 2.5 inch SSD your hard drive, which is a nice touch and maybe a bit unexpected on such a small and cheap PC. Another impressive thing is its I.O. It has a ton of ports. On the front you can find a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a USB-C connector, a reset button for the BIOS reset, a couple of USB 2.0 ports and a couple of USB 3.0 ports, and finally the power button all the way to the right, and on the back you find another two USB 2.0 ports, an HDMI connector, a full display port connector, which you usually don't find on these mini PCs, and a couple of one gigabit LAN ports, which is also a really nice addition in my opinion. And finally, all the way on the right, we got the DC 12 volt connector. By the way, this right here is the power supply of the Ace Magician AD03. It's quite small, as you can see. Finally, let's talk about the price. It costs $250 and it's usually on sale, so it's not an expensive PC whatsoever. And if all of the CPU specs didn't tell you that this is not a gaming PC, well, that price point definitely does. You're Graphics card probably costs more than this. <laughs> this mini PC is focused in giving you a really great experience navigating Windows, navigating the web, checking emails, maybe some office work. Even streaming 4K videos works absolutely flawlessly on this thing. And on top of all of that, it comes with Windows 11 pre-installed and ready to use out of the box. So it's a pretty nice package, you know, for the price. But in true crispy fashion, we need to see if this ace magician has some magic in it, so let's play some games, shall we? First up, let's try the good old GTA 5, which usually runs on a potato, and we're using DirectX 10, 720p resolution, and the lowest settings possible, aside from shadows, which could be disabled in the config files, but I didn't disable them, because I don't want the game to look like San Andreas. Maybe you should play San Andreas instead, but let's find out how it runs, okay? <laughs> and here we go, let's start counting those FPS, and it seems like you can can play GTA 5. No need to go to San Andreas or Vice City from like 20 years ago. This is gonna run okay-ish. It seems to be very similar to a GT 710 actually in terms of performance. Maybe the 710 was slightly faster, getting like 40, 42 FPS average or something like that. Um, we're also fully GPU bound here in this game. Oh my, you freaking bastard. Now, I feel like it is a little bit stuttery at times, especially when driving really fast, guys. Uh, but it is playable, and if you lock the F you, you, Why did you do that? <laughs> if you lock the FPS to, like, 30, it should also... Whoa, 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 whoa! 
Did you see, like, people falling from the ground and things loading and everything? Yeah, that's that's because the CPU is at 100% at the moment. Whenever CPUs are 100% utilized in GTA 5, that tends to happen. But it doesn't happen too often. And again, if you lock those FPS to 30, not only will the game be a little bit smoother, because it won't stutter as much, it will also not have any of those rendering issues. So it's going to be fine, guys. You can play GTA 5 even on a system like this, which I find amazing. Like, this is a really great title. Hello, Jack or Jacqueline. I, I don't know who it is today. Um, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, this is a AAA title that a lot of people are still playing, of course, super, super popular. It's old, yes, but it still looks really good, and it is running on a 15-watt CPU with integrated graphics. Like, that, that's amazing. There are better 15-watt CPUs with integrated graphics, but still. Next is CSGO at 720p using the lowest settings, once again. And I also disabled this setting right here, which was killing the FPS completely. Like, it was unplayable with that setting enabled, because it uses a full core or a full thread on your CPU. And we don't really have much CPU, you know? <laughs> so, there we go. Let's see if we can actually win this one. Ooh, the stuttering. The stuttering is real. Oh... No! Okay, okay, well, at least we, we, we got a ton of AFK people to kill, right? <sighs> More than half of the server are AFK people. I'm gonna try to find a new one. <laughs> it stutters too much. If you want to be competitive at this game, definitely don't install it with specs like these. <laughs> it is actually pretty bad in terms of stuttering. Look at the 1% lows, right? 8 FPS? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Maybe we should enable... Ugh, the laptop power saving mode here in CSGO. That locks the FPS to like 45, I think. Oh my god. Maybe it's gonna get rid of this stuttering. Wait a second. This is too much. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Just restarted counting our FPS with the 45 or 48 FPS lock, actually. That's weird. 48. Why 48? Oh my god, it still stutters like hell. It is un unplayable. CSGO is unplayable. I mean, it would probably have been playable back in like 2012 when this game came out. <laughs> Honestly, that version of the game was way easier to run than the current one. Uh, and now apparently you actually need more than a quad core or a slow quad core to play it. Oh, damn it. Okay, there we go. I mean, we if you could potentially play this... Uh, until you get enough cases to, to sell all of the, the cases on the Steam market and uh, buy a, a proper gaming PC with that. It's, it's an option. It's going to take you like 10 years, but maybe you'll get there someday. <laughs> all right, next I got Far Cry 3. And as you can see by that frame time graph over there in the corner, it is not a smooth experience. It feels like it is skipping frames whenever you are playing it. But I found a fix, all right? All you need to do is install RiviTuner and lock it to 30 frames per second. And look at what happens to that frame time graph, guys. It is buttery smooth right now. So let's get into it. Let's go over the settings now. I'm playing at 720p using DirectX 11. I tried DirectX 9, but it crashed on me, and we're using the low settings preset. Now, this is probably one of my favorite games of all time, guys. I actually played it through twice, so sorry. Oh, boy! Damn it! I'm wrecking the car already. Okay, all right. Good, it's good. We just gotta get used to it again, okay? <laughs> yes, believe it or not, I, I finished it twice. <laughs> Back in 2012 and 2013 when the game came out. Um, I actually played it on a GT 630M laptop and I used to lock it to 35 frames per second while playing on medium settings. This is not too far off of that experience. Now, it will have the odd stutter here and there. As you can see, those 1% lows are not at flat. 30 or like 29 but they're really close and it doesn't really bother me too much I, I would definitely enjoy my time in far cry 3 playing with 30 frames per second also that vram utilization is really funny to me 631 megabytes of usage you could play this game on stuff like 8800 gts with half a gig of vram and they would run this game absolutely fine good times my friends back when pc games were were well optimized and looked great at the same time. Holy crap. No, 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 no. Get out, Jason. All right. It's all good. It's all good. 
Shooting is still fine as well. There is no input lag whatsoever, I think, aside from the 30 FPS stuff, but the experience is actually really good. All right, I saved this one now. You're free to go. What? what? It just fell. What, what happened? <laughs> it's okay. See, guys, like this came at the same time as CSGO. And CSGO is just, it's running worse than this, actually, <laughs> these days. Uh, let's move on to the next one. And guys, it is time for another classic Battlefield 3. Very awesome title. One of my favorites as well from 2011. And it's being played right now at the 720p resolution and the low settings. Now let's, let's try to do something. Apparently we can't really reach 60 FPS and it still has a few stuttering issues. You know, I wish those would disappear, but... Uh, I guess this, this CPU or the GPU is a bit too slow. <laughs> Just a little bit. Once again, it's not meant for gaming at all. Uh, but it's good that you can play a little bit of Battlefield 3 if you want to. Is this... A, this is an enemy. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Please. <laughs> All right, I'm going with the Engineer now and the RPG. Also, in this map, these inside areas are the most intensive ones, and it's dropping into the 30s here. So you might want to, to lock it once again to 30 frames per second. All right, we hit that one. Okay, seems like we have a little bit of ping in this one, maybe. That's probably why the other tank missed the first shot on us. All right, and I remember playing this on a PS3 back in the days. Uh, I first bought it on a PS3, then on PC. And, oh, damn it, not from behind, man. I was going to destroy the tank. And actually, this mini PC is running this game better than a PS3. So that's nice. The PS3 is kept to 30 frames per second. It might have a little bit better graphics than this on low, honestly. Um, but yeah, I would take those 49 FPS all day long on average instead of 30 on the PlayStation Oh boy, no, 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 no. Let's proceed to the next one. If you want to play the campaign, it's also pretty decent in Battlefield 3. I liked it. Uh, and it has some gorgeous visuals. Next is Cyberbug 2077. I just clicked play, guys. It took a really long time to install. And then it crashed twice already. But I hope I fixed it now. Okay. All right. It's, it's trying to. All right, it's working. No? Okay, wait, it's working. Oh, damn it, again. <laughs> I don't know what this is, guys. I, I already tried installing this crap and it, it did not work. So uh, I guess we just can ignore. Oh, ignoring actually works. Oh, no, there's another crash. <laughs> Shut up, crash. I don't care. I went to get inside of the game. Well, what a roller coaster, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, let's let's go to the next one. Even if it launched with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it wouldn't have been playable, guys. So, and from 2009, we got Left 4 Dead 2 at 1080p resolution. Since it's such an old title, I think it will handle it at 1080p with the low settings, okay? Oh, look at that. Look at those 60 plus frames per second, guys. That is just unbelievable. Super great right now. No stuttering as well. This is beautiful. No All right, let's go. No sh what, coach? You don't need to be disrespectful. I, I, for example, wasn't expecting 60 plus and it's, it's actually not getting 60 plus anymore. It's getting 40s. All right, well, <laughs> at least it manages to look okay still with the low settings, you know? The textures, for example, are looking maybe on par or slightly better than The Last of Us Part 1 on low. <laughs> <laughs> That's something, you know? But yeah, if you if you really want 60 plus FPS in the le in left part, head two! Damn it! Guys, please help! Guys, please! Okay, thank you. You will definitely need to drop it down to like 900p, even 720p, you know. Uh, but at least it's it's a decent experience here. 60-ish on average. I actually played Left 4 Dead 2 back when it came out uh, with much lower FPS. Because I had a laptop with a dual-core CPU and a GeForce 103M. 
Yep, that was like the bottom of the barrel from NVIDIA laptop GPUs uh, back in 2009. There was only one that was worse than it, like GeForce 102M, but almost the same thing. The thing had eight CUDA cores, okay? It was pretty much the same as a GeForce G100, probably with a little bit of an underclock. You know, instead of an overclock, <laughs> because it was a mobile chip. So yeah, it was really, really terrible. And I still enjoyed the crap out of this game with like 25 FPS and 720p. <laughs> so there's that. You can definitely enjoy it with a system like this as well, which is nice to see. Now, Valorant must be the easiest game to run like ever, almost, aside from League of Legends. <laughs> We're playing at 720p resolution using the lowest settings, because I want to achieve 60 plus 100% of the time. All right, not too much of an issue here running Valorant apparently 90 something FPS. That's good 100% That's stuttering though <laughs> No, kill joy, please stop killing my joy I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, uh, but yeah G These are actual stutters guys. I'm not like pausing the video or anything 1% lows are at 1 FPS Holy freaking crap, dude, that's that's insane. In Valorant, man. Are you serious? You know what? I'm, I'm going to lock the FPS. I'm going to lock them to 60 frames right here. That will uh, put a little bit less stress on the CPU. And maybe it's going to stutter a little bit less or at least get less severe stutters. God damn it, Killjoy. All right, let's go. Here it is. 60 frames per second. And I, oh, now I got Killjoy. Are you serious? <laughs> it's definitely stuttering a little bit less. And I was surprised to see that the, not from behind, uh, the GPU utilization was maxed out whenever we had this, the FPS unlocked. We got Peix a mesa, that means fish on the table. So it's a restaurant, a fish restaurant right there. All right, you, you can explore Valorant if you want to. You can't really be very competitive at it, unfortunately, but hey, it works, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, if it wasn't for the stutters, which have been minimized right now, um, it would have been a really good experience. Oh, nice double kill, finally doing something, my friends. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, and this is my new account, by the way. This is probably the second or third game of Deathmatch that I am playing here. Imagine if I was a new player, and I've seen this in the comments a lot, new players to the game getting put against all of these try-hard people and just dying every time and then installing the game, like, instantly. It's, it's kind of stupid, developers. Ah, oh boy, we're back to a really intensive title, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> this is not gonna go well, there is no way. <laughs> 720p resolution, lowest settings possible, performance FSR 2, which is the lowest here in this game. Um, and yeah, everything else is also set to the lowest. So it looks terrible because of FSR2 on performance and 720p. Like, look at Arthur. You can count the pixels sometimes on his arms and stuff. Damn, that's terrible. But at least it's not stuttering. It's one of the few games that uh, doesn't have one single stuttering issue. Look at this beautifully smooth eight frames per second we can still go lower than this guys okay i'm, I'm gonna try to do that <laughs> i'm gonna disable amd fsr2 and set the taa to off right here and then down here in the resolution scale i'm gonna set it to 0.5 which means that we will be playing the game at 360p all right this is it it's now applied and will it look better or worse than fsr2 on performance actually i'm curious to see that oh boy <laughs> so much worse but it is getting slightly higher fps i mean we're in the double digits now that that must mean something it, that must mean that it, it is now playable right no definitely not well, at least we get to see Roach still. Hello, buddy. Whoa! Whoa, the water is disappearing. <laughs> but yeah, it's good that it's not stuttering, at least, guys. It has some loading issues. It has some really low frames. It has some graphical issues. But it doesn't stutter. That's how well Red Dead Redemption 2 is optimized, my friends. It's, it's insane. It's actually crazy. Guys, have you ever seen the true meaning 
of Stutter. <laughs> This is Stutter Night that we're playing right now at the 720p using performance mode and the low settings. And uh, that frame time is... Uh, it's not terrible. We've seen worse, I think, today. But, oh boy, <laughs> at least while dropping, this is absolutely magnificent, isn't it? Are things still loading? Like, that tree was... it just came out of nowhere. I'm hearing somebody. What? Where is he? What the hell? I hear somebody really close to me. Is it not rendering him? What? Is he that far away? How is it that possible? What the hell? Okay, okay, anyway. It is an atrocity of a gameplay scenario here. It's, it's terrible. It is completely awful, guys. It's so much stuttering. I can't even speak or think properly, honestly. It must be because this is only the second game that I'm trying this on, all right? Maybe by the third or fourth game it will smooth out. It's not gonna happen because, again, it's the second game that I'm trying. It even stutters on my high-end computers with like the i5 13600K, Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, with 32 gigabytes, DDR5 and DDR4, and RTX 4080s and so on. So nothing really you can do about this to make it not stutter. GPU usage is also not maxed out. We're fully CPU bound here with the uh, N95 CPU. I really want to lock it to 30 FPS to see if the stutters improve because 6 FPS 1% lows is just, it's, 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 awful. it's the worst thing, you know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's try this out. 30 FPS lock. I know some people that do play like this and they're happy with the experience in Fortnite, but no, it's still, it's still stuttering like crazy, guys. Yep, uh, I don't think you should <laughs> play this game. So this is Overwatch 2 at 720p resolution with 75% resolution scale, which means that we're playing at the resolution and we're using the lowest settings as usual, guys, and uh, it is getting okay FPS, but the stutters, man, how the f No, 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 no. I actually, I really thought this was gonna be super playable because it's really well optimized. And to be fair, in the deathmatch, while I was waiting for this game to, to, to find the game, actually, I joined the deathmatch server. It was running okay at like 60-ish FPS, 50s at times. But now it's stuttering like hell, dude! It's really terrible! This is total mayhem, by the way. Oh my gosh, I can't even control my aim here. It's so bad. 4 FPS, 1% low. CPU usage is constantly maxed out here. That's clearly what's making the stutters, I think. Overwatch 2 is not a game that you should play on this thing. That's, that's a big shame, guys, but I'm going to set this to 100% here and I'm going to lock it to 30 frames per second, all right? At 30 FPS, we should be... Oh, no, it, it actually drops from 30 at 100%. <laughs> Uh, well, let's let's keep it at 75% resolution scale with a 30 FPS lock, all right? And this way... I really thought the CPU usage was gonna be lower, but no, it's pegged at 100% still. Damn, bro. It's crazy bad. <laughs> Finally, Dota 2 actually runs properly. 720p, lowest settings, 100% resolution scale, no stuttering for the most part. <laughs> well, we got one single stutter there, probably loading something. I just loaded this game right here. I'm watching it, not really playing it, um, but it's as intensive as if I was playing the game. And uh, it is running all right. You know, we're CPU bound all the way here. GPU usage is never maxed out here in Dota 2. And we get like 40 plus frames per second all of the time, I would say. Maybe with a few drops into the 30s, uh, whenever it stutters and whenever we have big team fights happening. But uh, overall, it's smooth. Finally, we found a game that I can say, yes, if you have something like this PC and you want to have one game installed, it's this one, Dota 2. Very addicting game as well. <laughs> also, it's dropping right now. Ooh, GPU usage is going up, finally. Interesting. 
So sometimes you can be CP uh, GPU bound if there are a ton of effects on screen. Since we've seen a team fight a couple of times already, maybe three times, I think that's enough. Whenever nothing is happening or just some small things are happening, you can get 60 plus. It's good. And for the last game, we got the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the legendary title that runs on everything, supposedly. We're playing 720p resolution using the low settings preset, and the game defaulted to high at 1080p. But we're not gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys. I knew high settings would have been a really terrible idea. We're GPU bound at 720p low settings already, and it is getting around like 50 to 60 frames per second with a lot of frame time issues. So you might as well actually lock it to 30. I'm gonna do that in Rivet Tuner. Okay, at 30 FPS locked, it can actually achieve that without an issue whatsoever. It's really buttery smooth at the moment as you can see it doesn't even move in the frame time graph so <sighs> I am glad to say Skyrim is actually very playable I got scared for a moment there <laughs> seeing so much stuttering but I mean I guess you just need to lock your FPS in every single game that you can because it's gonna turn an absolutely awful experience into a decent playable one at least you can play a few titles here on a thing like this it still has some stuttering issues but you know if you are running games on this thing you don't really care about a couple of stutters every like a minute or so it would be playable for somebody not really used to gaming whatsoever for example digimoon my girlfriend and editor of this video <laughs> she is used to be playing now on an rtx 4070 you know and she's been using the 3060 Ti for a few years now, but she started on an Intel Celeron 1007U processor and she actually played a fair share of Skyrim with a lot of stuttering and 18 FPS on average. So if she could do that, I think some people would actually enjoy this experience at 30 frames per second. It also seems like it only stutters whenever it needs to load something new, you know. Right now it's been pretty flawless. Uh, let's move on to the conclusion then. I'll show you some Cinebench performance while we're at it. So uh, see you soon. Well, here we are. Another low-end CPU torturing video is done and it's time to share my thoughts on it. So the gaming experience was terrible. I'm not sure if it's because it's using DDR4, probably with DDR5 it would have been much faster and 16 gigabytes as well, but uh, yeah, if you're buying something like this, maybe install Dota 2 and nothing else, okay? <laughs> I mean, you can have a little bit of fun, but if you're used to playing games in any other system that actually runs games well, even the Switch, you're not gonna like the experiences here, <laughs> all right? But again, as I said 10 times in this video already, this is not a gaming PC. You should not play games on it. It's not meant for it. And everything else that it is supposed to do, it does really well, as I told you in the intro. So if you're looking for a really cheap PC that's also very low profile and it's silent with good temperatures, I forgot to mention that, but it's really, really quiet even under full load. Well, this is a pretty good option in my opinion. Again, not for gaming, but not all of the computers out there need to be made for gaming. But we gotta test all of them in gaming, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.